Hello everyone, welcome back with me, Yuliani, in another series of Linguistics for Dump Me, where I'll be explaining linguistics topics in a simple way because of my slow processing brain. Now, in this video, I'll be talking about Speech Act Part 2. This Part 2 consists of elocutionary force indicating devices or IFITs, the classifications of speech acts, and differences between direct and indirect speech acts. Again, I'm going to give some illustrations and examples so we can reach the same points of views on speech acts. Let's begin! Elocutionary force indicating devices are all linguistics elements showing how an utterance is to be taken. In other words, IFIDs are expressions showing the elocutionary act performed by a speaker in the utterance. The elements can be performative verbs, which are verbs that explicitly name the speech act such as offer in I offer you hot coffee and order in I order you to make hot coffee. However, in most interactions, such use of performative verbs rarely happens. We often use different expressions in our utterance to perform the elocutionary act. For instance, when I'm offering you coffee, I don't say, I offer you hot coffee. Instead, I simply use, I just made hot coffee. So, where are the IFIDs? Even though I only utter, I just made hot coffee, there are other elements such as paralanguage, which is a gesture of me bringing a cup of hot coffee and give the cup to you. Other than performative verbs, IFIDs can be identified through word order, stress, and intonation. Look at the illustration of me saying hmm. The first one, when I say hmm, it can mean that I'm confused. When I say hmm to you as you are seated, it can mean I'm asking you to move over. I probably say this hmm as I move my head to the side as a gesture of asking you to move. Fun fact! In Sundanese, we will automatically know that when older people tell us Dabagur, they are going to ask us to do something. Dabagur has been unofficially known as an IFIT for requests by Sundanese. So, IFITs can be identified not only from lexical components or expressions involving words, but also from non-lexical elements such as intonation, stress, tone, and so on. Now that you know the IFITs, I'm going to elaborate the classifications of speech acts. There are five classifications of speech acts according to Sir. The first one is representatives. Based on my research, this is the classification that often occurs in any interactions. Representatives are kinds of speech acts that state what the speaker believes to be the case or not. In other words, representatives show what the speaker believes or does not believe. Statements, opinions, conclusions, and descriptions are examples of representative speech acts. My previous statement, which claimed that representatives often occurred in any interactions, is one example of representative speech act. Another example is when I say, math is more difficult than English. I give my opinion about math and English. The second classification is declaration or declaratives. 
These are the kinds of speech acts that bring changes to the situation, such as blessing, firing, you're fired, and marrying. I pronounce you husband and wife. The difference between representatives and declarations is in declarations, the speaker must have the specific role in a specific context in order for the utterance to bring about change. Let me give you an illustration. I am your pragmatics lecturer. I'm the one who gets to decide whether you pass or fail the class. I notice that you only come to my class three times, and you never complete your assignments. Therefore, if I say, you don't pass this course, this means that you fail pragmatics class. Where's the change to the situation? The failure is the change. You thought you'd pass this class, turns out you fail. It's a different meaning when the utterance, you don't pass this course, is said by your friend. Who's he to decide your fate? The third speech act classification is expressives. Again, Based on my research, expressives also happen regularly in interactions. As the name implies, expressives show what the speaker feels. Psychological states like pain, likes, dislikes, joy, sadness, and more belong to expressive speech acts. Compliments, complaints, apologies, Congratulations, greetings are examples of expressives. The word "you" uttered with a disgusted facial expression and intonation is an expressive. The eye fits showing disgust are the facial expression and intonation. Picture if I said "you" with no expression, no intonation. You. It wouldn't be an expressive speech act of disgust, would it? The fourth classification is directives. From the word direct, which means to give an order, this speech act shows that the speaker wants the hearer to do something. Directives include requests, orders, and commands. The question, can you pass the salt? uttered to someone who is sitting at a dining table with a bottle of salt nearby is a request for that person to give the salt to the speaker. The Sundanese phrase dabagur also belongs to this directive speech act. I mean, every Sundanese must be aware that the person who says the phrase is going to ask them to do something. The last classification is commissives. This speech act involves future actions or things that haven't happened. Promises, threats, refusals, vows, pledges, and offers belong to this kind of speech act. Let's go back to my offer of hot coffee. Why does my offer of coffee belong to commissive speech act? Because the coffee hasn't even been given to you, and it depends on your response towards my offer. If you reject my offer, that also belongs to Commissive Speech Act because I haven't even prepared the coffee for you and you refuse. So, I won't prepare the coffee. Whew, what an explanation! Now, I want you to relax, take a deep breath, exhale, and let's carry on. In terms of indirectness, 
There are two types of speech acts, direct and indirect speech acts. A speech act is called a direct speech act when there's a direct relationship between a structure and a function. The structure is the locutionary act, aka the sentence form. The function is the elocutionary act, that is, the hidden meaning the speaker tries to convey. As we know, there are commonly three kinds of sentence forms, namely declarative or statement, interrogative or question, and imperative. Now, when I give my opinion that math is more difficult than English, this belongs to direct speech act. My opinion is a representative speech act and the sentence form is in a statement. Then, when I say, I just made hot coffee, even though the sentence form is a statement, but the purpose is to offer, this is an indirect speech act. Indirect speech act means that there is an indirect relationship between a structure and a function. The direct speech act from offer of coffee can be in interrogative form such as Would you like some hot coffee? Or even in the form of statement, but the statement consists of a performative verb offer, like Let me offer you some hot coffee. Now, do you still remember my video about cooperative principle and implicatures? I said that implicatures were also indirect speech acts. Why do you think that? Let me give you an illustration. When you ask me what time I am coming to class and I answer, I'm in a meeting right now. Do you think I simply inform you that I have a meeting? No. You may interpret my answer that I'm not coming to class or I will be late to class because at the time the conversation happens, I'm in a meeting. Another example is when I offer you hot coffee. If you reply my offer with, I just had a cup of hot chocolate, I'd definitely take your reply as a refusal, not merely as a statement to give information. What a complicated explanation, right? Remember, the elocutionary force indicating devices can be in the form of linguistic elements such as a performative verb. And they can also be non-lexical elements like intonation, stresses, facial expressions, or gestures. Then, the five classification of speech acts serve their own function. Representatives show that speaker believes something. Declarations show that speaker causes something. Expressives show that speaker feels something. Directives show that speaker wants something. And commissives show that speaker intends something. Lastly, when the illocutionary act has a direct relationship with the locutionary act, it is a direct speech act. On the other hand, if the elocutionary act has indirect relationship with the locutionary act, it is an indirect speech act. Implicatures belong to indirect speech act because there has never been a direct relationship between the sentence form and the function. Well, finally, We've come to the end of speech act. I do hope the two-part videos can at least give you general ideas of what speech acts are. Thanks for watching and please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye everyone!